Hello everyone and welcome to my first official video of Jenna Voice. So I have so many ideas for this channel, I kind of didn't really know where to begin. Uh, so I thought, why not start with something really fundamental that every singer does, and that is learn music. We all learn songs, and if you're a classical singer, you're probably also learning arias. So this video will hopefully give you some tips on how to learn a new piece of music. Now like I said, since everybody learns music, we all have our ways of doing it, so this is by no means me telling you how to, but the goal of this video is really to do as much work as possible before taking your music into a practice room. I really believe that the more work that I do before trying to sing a new piece, the quicker I am able to learn it and the less time that I have to spend uh, in a practice room. Um, that's really one of the downsides of being a singer. We don't have the luxury of being able to spend hours of productive time in a practice room each day. Really we only have a one to two hour limit of healthy singing that we can do at a time when we're working on music. So. Without further ado, here are my tips to learning a new piece of music. Tip number one, print your music. Please print your music. I know we live in a digital time and there are so many wonderful things about that, but I personally think it is so valuable to physically have a piece of paper and work with it with a pencil uh, and have it in a binder. So, even if you are someone who really wants to use a tablet that is your choice, that's totally fine. I would still recommend printing at least one copy for your records and a copy for your accompanist. I don't know a lot of accompanists who like to work with a tablet, so more likely than not, your accompanist will expect you to have a printed copy of your music in a binder for them. So do that right off the bat so you have a clean copy ready to go um, for whatever your purposes are. Tip number two, look at the language of your piece. Is this a language you are fluent in? If it is, this is gonna save you a couple steps and that's awesome. But if it is not, if this is a foreign language to you, translate it. Step number one, please translate it. Um, I wanna sidetrack just for a second on the topic of translating because there are so many sources out there for translating your music and I might make a whole separate video on this because it's such a big topic but in general text sources text I mean books are more reliable than internet sources so keep that in mind if you can find a text source that has the translation of your piece go to that before the internet it might take more time to find a good translation but trust me, it's worth it. Uh, in addition, I think it's incredibly valuable to have a dictionary um, in the foreign languages you are working in. So for example, I have uh, at the moment an Italian dictionary, a German dictionary, and a French dictionary. And these are really great for singer purposes because each of them, well, here, let me just show you. For example, here is my Italian copy of the Collins Dictionary. Uh, what is so wonderful about it is that it includes next to the Italian word, the IPA, that uh, helps me to understand how to pronounce it, not just the translation. Which leads into my next point after translating your piece. IPA. So if this is a language that number one is foreign to you and number two you are not very comfortable in the rules of pronunciation, you're going to need to use the International Phonetic Alphabet. Now, once you understand what the International Phonetic Alphabet is, if you don't, please ask your teacher. Um, that's a whole other thing. I. I would have to make another video on of what it is. But basically what the International Phonetic Alphabet is, is a series of symbols that explains different consonant and vowel sounds that any language can make. That everyone 
who understands the international phonetic, phonetic alphabet will understand. Um, so it's incredibly valuable for singers to understand what this is and hopefully your teacher or coach can help you to understand this system and you will be able to learn so much more rep than you had ever thought of because language is no longer a barrier. Next step, do your research. Um, I think it's really important to understand where your piece is coming from, whether it's a song or an aria. Is it from a song cycle? Is it from an opera? Who composed this piece? When was it written? What were the circumstances under which it was written? Um, who was the poet or who provided the text for this piece? Um, this is all incredibly valuable information that will help you to better understand and determine choices you're going to need to make as a musician when you perform this piece. Next tip. Examine the rhythm and the meter of the piece. Take a good look at your music and ask yourself, can I speak this text comfortably with the rhythm that's on the page before singing it? If you don't understand the rhythm or meter or both, I would recommend taking it to your teacher and just saying, hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me count this out? Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the time if I'm working on a piece where I'm less comfortable with the rhythm or meter, I will just take my pencil and start writing in where the beats are in each bar, which helps me to, to, to mathematically separate the notes. Making sure you completely understand the rhythm and meter of your piece is extremely important before you start to sing it because if you have to unlearn something that you thought you were doing right but was completely off uh it's it's not fun it's not fun to unlearn things it's it's very difficult muscle memory is one of the strongest aspects of memory so making sure you implement these pieces before physically working it into your muscle memory is extremely valuable please take that time next topic recordings um so the topic of recordings tends to be controversial um i've heard a lot of people in my younger years say do not listen to recordings before you take your piece into a practice room i've also heard a lot of people in recent years expressing the incredible value of listening to recordings um, while you're learning a piece or before you learn a piece i personally think that listening to recordings is valuable. However, listening to recordings is a, not an excuse to skip the practice room, let me make that clear. It is not a means for you to skip that work of singing your piece. Really the purpose of recordings in my perspective is Number one, just to give myself a general idea of the piece as a whole. Um, my piano skills are not the best. I cannot accompany myself and sing at the same time. Furthermore, if I'm working on a bigger scene with more singers, I'm not able to play their parts and sing my part at the same time. So just being able to listen to a recording to hear the musical piece as a whole is really helpful to me. Um, in addition to this, I think recordings can give you stylistic ideas um, that are appropriate to the genre that you are singing or the time period that you are singing. Another benefit of recordings is that you can hear things that you really don't want to do um, and <laughs> give you ideas of how you will not want to sing, and you'll find plenty of those recordings. Those are much easier to access than good quality recordings. So keep that in mind when you're fishing through recordings. Not all of them are good and reliable. And as you work more through singing, you'll be able to recognize those more. If you aren't sure if it's a good recording or not, ask your teacher and they'll give you an honest opinion. So after you have implemented all of these steps or tips, I think the next logical step is to take it to the practice room. And this is when you can start working it into your muscle memory. And hopefully after having done all of this work before taking it into the practice room, 
you will learn it much easier and faster. So I hope this video was helpful for you all. Um, please leave me a comment down below if there are other tips that you use to learning music that I did not bring up. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends if you think it might help them as well with learning their music. Also, hit that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed and I will see you all for my next video. Bye. Uh, also, bonus points if you can tell me what song I was looking at an IPA.